Hey guys, Fe here. Today we'll be making a quick guide on the eye phase that is the phase 4 of Dragon Song Surprise Ultimate, so let's get right into it. Now, first things first, as soon as you finish beating Nidhogg on phase 3, you will see Estinen spawn in the middle of the arena. There will be the Nidhogg's eyes that are going to get separated from him. The red eye is going to move towards the right side, and the blue eye is going to move towards the left side. First thing that you need to do here is ensure that everyone stacks at south. The reason for this is because two players are going to get an AoE buff onto them and when you stand onto these AoEs, you get a buff which enables you to damage the eyes. If you did not stand onto these AoEs or you died, you are not going to be able to damage the eyes. Next thing that you need to know here is everyone is going to get tethered. There can be only a blue tether and a red tether. Just like the extreme mode, you have to ensure that the blue desert players do not take any sorts of damage. In the case they take any sorts of damage, they are going to heal the blue eye and you will not be able to meet the DPS check. The next thing that you will see is there will be 6 orbs that will spawn onto the arena. There will be 2 yellow orbs and 4 blue orbs. You have to ensure that these orbs expand twice before you are taking them and the players who are going to be taking them are the players who have the red desert, otherwise it is going to heal the blue eye. Let's take a look at this video to demonstrate everything that I explained so far. So here you can see everyone stuck tightly at south, there is Estinen in the middle, there are the Nidhogg's eyes that are going to get separated from him and move towards the west and east side, at the same time you can see two players get these crystal like things above the head and they are going to drop AoE puddles. As soon as you step onto these AoE puddles, you are going to get these two buffs which will enable you to damage the eyes. Now before we move on here, you will see there is a Nidhogg's influence gauge. You have to make sure that this does not fill up to 100 otherwise you are going to wipe. Before we get the tethers here, you will see there is a huge AoE that goes off. This also inflicts bleed onto everyone, make sure you heal and mitigate through this. The next thing that you will see is, the eyes are going to cost hate bound. As soon as they finish costing hate bound, 4 players are going to get the blue tethers and 4 players are going to get the red tethers. At the same time, you will see the orbs spawn. And here you can see there is the blue orbs, there are the blue orbs on the, the other side as well, and here is the yellow orb and the same onto the other side. To proceed with this strat, we ensure that our tanks and melees get the red tether and our range and healers get the blue tether. Now the reason for this is because our tanks and melees are going to be soaking the yellow orbs first. But in the case you did not get the correct tether, you will just go towards the middle and someone else who does not have the correct tether as well will also come towards the middle and it will automatically swap the tether colors. The reason this works is because as soon as you swap your tether color with someone with the opposite tether, you automatically get a debuff which prevents you from swapping tethers. Let's take a look at an example of tether swapping. So here the tethers go off, and since I'm the melee, I need the red tether, but here I got the blue tether. So I move towards the middle, and here it automatically swaps the tether with anyone else who had the wrong tether as well. So here I also get this debuff which prevents me from swapping my tether further. So as a melee I move towards the yellow orbs, but here is a catch. When we are soaking these yellow orbs, we have to make sure it is soaked in pairs. So here together with the other melee, we soak it in pair. In the case you do not soak this in pair, you are going to die. After you finish soaking the yellow orbs, there will be another tether swap. So here, the ranged and the healers will have to get the red tethers to soak the blue orbs. So here the dancer will move towards me, the samurai, the red mage will move towards the reaper, the white mage will move towards the gunbreaker, and the sage will be moving towards the paladin to swap the tethers. Let's take a look at this in the video. So here, after we soak the yellow orb, you will see our ranged come swap tethers with us, the same applies to the other side whereby the healers will swap with the tanks and the tanks and melees will now have blue tethers. Here you can see our ranged are going to be the ones that are going to get the red tethers. The other side as well, the healers are going to be the ones that are going to get the red tethers. So here we just move towards the middle and then the ranged and healers soak the blue orbs respectively before they explode. 
Now let's break down the next sets of mechanics. Two out of the four Red Desert players are going to get two sets of random meteor dives. These players cannot be hit by the next set otherwise they are going to die. Hence a swap is needed by the Blue Desert players. To ensure efficient swapping, we put all our melees and tanks having the blue tethers in the middle of the blue eye and our range and healers align themselves in such a way that they are max melee northwest, northeast, southwest and southeast to ensure that this swapping goes on while keeping up time. To ensure that the blue tethered players know where to go, we put the swapping into a priority system. So here, everyone is always going to look towards northwest and then clockwise. So since the tanks are going to be swapping first, our main tank is going to go northwest here and then clockwise from it, the next dive is here, so our off tank is going to go right here. In the case that the dive was like this, then our main tank would go here and our off tank would go here. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take it that the dive is like this. This would basically mean that the main tank would move here and our off tank would move right here. This also applies to the next set of players that are going to be swapping as well, that is our melees and the first pair. Let's take a look back at the original diagram. So here our dancer and our sage have the first dives. They are going to swap with the tanks. So here the gunbreaker goes northwest, the paladin goes southeast, and then the dancer and the sage goes middle. The next set is onto the gunbreaker and the white mage. So our melees are going to swap next. The samurai goes here, the reaper goes here. The next set is onto the samurai and onto the paladin. So the players that swap first are going to swap with these players. So here the dancer goes back to the position and the sage goes back to the position and the last set of meteor dives is onto the dancer and the red mage. Now let's take a look at the video to demonstrate what I just explained. So here you can see everyone is aligned accordingly and here the eyes are casting marriage dive. So the first dive goes onto our dancer and our sage so our gunbreaker and paladin swaps accordingly. The next set is onto the Gunbreaker and the Red Mage as you can see right here. So since I'm D1, I'm going to be going Northwest. The Reaper is D2, he's going to take the Southwest option. So here we swap and you can see I get the Red Desert. The next set of dives come onto us, so I get it and the Reaper gets it. Then it will be the first pair that swapped uh, will be swapping with us. So the Dancer swaps with me and the Sage swaps with our Reaper and the last sets of dives go off. Now you will have to bring the eyes already at a very low percentage of HP because there's not much going on except a huge AOE by both of these eyes. As you can see here, both of these eyes will cause a steep in rage. You would want to ensure that you do not get hit by the blue one. So here we just kill the blue eye and then we only get hit by the red eyes steep in rage. So here we get hit by the red eyes deep in rage. As you can see, it does a huge amount of damage. So here we kill it before this meter fills up. And so this ends the eye phase. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. Please consider dropping a like and subscribe because this really helps support this channel so I can make more content. I hope this video was helpful to you and I'll see you guys later on.